Hello folks and welcome. So I have a video here for you on Emma Buntus. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And they are doing some wonderful work in the community. A lot of nonprofit stuff. Today I'm going to talk about their distribution and uh, it is Debian 12 based and it is an XFCE desktop 418. Hopefully you've seen enough of that info. Filming in 1920 by 1080. And you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly. You're watching this on Linux for seniors. Icon in the right hand corner if you'd like to subscribe. If you don't see that icon, go find me on YouTube. Linux is for any age, but the name of the channel is Linux for Seniors. And I'll also have a shortcut for you to look for some extra mouse cursors and icon sets because I'm going to be talking about that along with a tool to convert images for wallpaper to do stuff like that. If you know what the original looks like, this is like glass tile. Show you some different perspective because I have three of these and I'll be showing the tool to use. It already comes installed with Emma Buntus. So again, filming in 1920 by 1080. So our user for today is Bob. It's just a made up name. And uh, the particular icon set that I'm using today is uh, called Futura. And I'll give you some different perspectives, starting at the top. And you'll also see this icon change. It'll have a Viking helmet on it. And, uh, and I'll give you the perspective of small to large. So basically, um, to a lot of folks, they probably are going, well, that's too bright colored for me. It's not my thing and whatever else. You know what? Everybody's different. All I'm doing is showing you some things you can do with your desktop that add some color to an XFCE desktop. Lots of different options for you. Okay. So another one would be candy. Again, this could be too colorful for some and for others, not so much. All right. Just some different perspectives on icon sets. I'll switch back to Futura. So I'm going to talk, be talking about adding stuff through here. I'm also going to be talking mostly adding it manually. And the reason for that is to make you understand how you can remove stuff also and troubleshoot because there's no removal here when you're adding icons. They can only add. There's nothing to remove. So are you stuck with them? No, I'm going to show you how to amp manually on remove stuff or remove stuff. The same thing goes with adding mouse pointers, mouse cursors, different names, right? This one here is the only one that is installed in a single location. The rest of these are installed in the system USR share icons folder. That's normally where developers install their mouse cursors for most Linux distros. This one here is in Bob's home folder though. So might as well talk about Bob now. And that would be viewing by show hidden files, which is control H. So I right clicked or Bob right clicked and created a folder called period icons. I usually refer it to dot icons, period icons, dot icons, mouse pointers, mouse cursors, different names for things. This was called empty butterfly yellow VR5 is what the name of this cursor is. It's a see-through mouse pointer. The candy icons I just showed you, Futura is what I'm currently using. And then I added these other ones that I showed you earlier, the one with the Viking helmet on it. Okay, these are in the same location, period, icons, dot icons. Bob is our user for today. This one is installed here. Not really going to talk about this afterwards. USR, share, icons. Right click, properties, permissions. You have to have root permissions to add and remove anything out of this folder. Okay. Maya orange is this one. That's where that's located. So now let's go back to Bob and let's talk about what you can add rather easily. You can create your own period icons folder, dot icons folder, and then you can throw your mouse cursors, mouse pointers, and icon sets in here. 
Okay, very simple to do. You can use this tool here to add things, or you can do it manually. When you're using this tool and you go into this period icons folder and you see scattered files, something went wrong. Okay, that's why I normally install everything manually. I have a 99% success rate, and more importantly, there's no removal tool here in the appearance section. So how, how would you remove this? Well, you would use your file manager for that. So if you don't like the Futura set, you hit the delete key on your keyboard, it ends up in your trash, and then you can uninstall it if you like. I normally don't like to delete things I'm currently using, but I'm gonna do it anyways. You notice it just switched icon themes immediately because they didn't like what I just did. Well, I'm gonna do a restore. And then I'm gonna go back up one. It just accepted the theme back. Yeah, normally you don't wanna be deleting things you're currently using. All right, but I just did it for that reason, just to let you see how quickly I can recover from that. Okay, so I just added that back in there. So if you see scattered files in here, after you use this statement here, then go fix that. Normally you can do this manually. So I'm gonna be showing you this website in a minute. It has over 800 different mouse cursors and over 1600 icon sets. Right click, extract here. Right click, extract here. I'm gonna do this in bulk. This is an icon set and that's a mouse cursor. So let me show you what's currently in there. All right, in the, this is the only one that's manually installed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to highlight both of these, I right click and cut them, and toss them into period icons or dot icons. Okay, I'm gonna have to refresh the screen by backing out and backing in, and you'll see the extra mouse cursor now called Oreo Red Cursor. That's this one right there. It's simple as that. If I don't like the red Oreo, I hit the delete key. When I back out of the screen and go back in there, it is gone. It's that quick. If I change my mind, that's the beauty of using your file manager, you can do a restore. And now red Oreo is back online. So far so good? Okay. So website. All right, Emma Buntis, nonprofit, .org, mission statement. They're doing lots of great things for the community. I encourage that you read about it in detail. Download the distribution as of uh, February of 2024. It's got a newer update. And then on my YouTube site, you can uh, sneak over here. You can do searches. I'm gonna be showing you a little bit later how to use a little bit of GIMP for your wallpaper. But there's basic usage for GIMP here for making rounded icons, for instance. Here's my mission statement. Videos are also for any user of Linux, regardless of a particular age. All right, I got two sites for icon sets and mouse themes. I'll use the xfce-look.org. gnome-look.org also has the same databases. So 839 mouse cursors or mouse pointers. There's also a search feature. It's hard to actually see it, but it's right here if you're looking for a specific name. Okay. MT Butterfly Cursor is what I'm currently using. And there it is. You can see the yellow right there. Full icon themes. I have I, uh, candy icons. Single file. You may not like the theme, but you can always download things, test them yourself, and delete them. Tar, tape archive.exe, compressed in other words. Lots of options. All right, they end up in your download folder. And you've got two choices to install this stuff. You have the tool, which is done through here. 
and the add tool it has two boxes one here one here if they don't successfully install then do it manually if you download several themes at the same time my suggestion is to do it manually it'll install faster just uncompress them real quick and you know where to throw them they need to go into your period icons folder if there are cursor sets or icon sets very simple one more time on the folder itself you don't want scattered files you want everything in a nice neat container they need to be in a folder or a directory you don't want scattered files in here it's sometimes hard to tell what these are you can't tell if that's a mouse cursor or an icon set this happens to be an icon set all right, it actually says multicolored icon theme right across the comment box in the index theme. So that one there says, doesn't really tell you if it's a cursor or if it's a regular icon theme, but this is definitely a cursor because it has a cursor folder on it. Just some examples of different ways to look at things. All right, so you can get all your icon sets and your mouse cursors again they're picked in different locations but if the uh, add key does not work for you then do it manually and you have to uninstall them manually because there's no removal key here same thing goes with your mouse themes mouse theme mouth mouse themes theme themes it's just the way they term them up here all right so and um, let's now talk about wallpapers for a second. I'm going to turn off hidden, control H. I've got three examples for you, and you may have seen me use this wallpaper if you're a subscriber. That's what it normally looks like. This came from wallpaperswide.com. It's just a dude looking in his computer. All right, so let me go back to pictures, and I'll pick this middle one. This is the same, except it has a canvas on it. it. Looks like a painting with canvas on it. You can still actually make out the wallpaperswhite.com at the bottom. And the last one, it looks like tile glass. Little bits and pieces, and it actually looks 3D on my screen. It gives you that illusion of 3D. You can do this to any photograph or any wallpaper. What tool am I using? It comes already installed. GNU Image Manipulation Program. There's lots of tools that come installed on this distribution, and that's one of them. You can apply just about any filter you want. Lots of different experiments in here. Okay, lots of different ways to, to uh, well, manipulate your backgrounds, your pictures. So bring in those photos of the grandkids, the kids, the pets, the friends, and do some artistic work to it. Then when you get done, hit the file and export. Do not hit save or save as. My recommendation, recommendation is to use export into a PNG and JPEG. That way you can save your filters properly. Export as either PNG or JPEG. It's just done by the file name up here. So you can term that as PNG also. And don't forget to change the name if you're working with a current image. You don't want to have to overwrite the image. So there's lots of things you can play with. And that is, again, GIMP, like Photoshop. And if you're wanting to know how to take a standard photo of something and turn it into an icon, Take a look at my video on my YouTube site. All of my stuff is keyword searchable. So go onto my YouTube site. Click the center section in here with that magnifying glass and type in GIMP. You'll find that video immediately. It's right here. Yes, it's made for a different distribution, but this will just it's just discussing how to use GIMP. A GNU image manipulation program. Okay. Thank you for watching.